in higher education, we are good at one piece of this. We are better than ever before at recruiting the poorest 40% of Americans to actually start going to colleges and universities. And the hero in that is the community college system, which is underappreciated and underdiscussed. However, past that barrier, we fall apart. We are terrible at graduating people from the 40, especially the 20% poorest. They are not represented in the professoriate. They are barely represented in our support staff. And one of the reasons for this is that uh, Robert Putnam established this with his recent book, Our Kids, is that we now have segregation, indeed Putnam calls it apartheid, the level of economic class, down to the level of, of blocks and neighborhoods. So it's pretty clear to have a good school district, a school district that has lots of money and that can afford to pay for things beyond taxes as well, and there are bad school districts. And at the K-12 level, we see a huge class differentiation begin to appear. And when you look at the United States, you look at our leading universities and colleges, they tend to skim off the very, very top. You know, you think about the institutions with enormous endowments, Yale, Harvard, Stanford, UT, Austin, for example. Middlebury College just passed their endowment at $1 billion in size. And some of them can do a great job of giving full rides to all their students, right? This is terrific, very, very good. But they still tend to recruit from the richest, both in the United States and outside of the United States. Indeed, I saw one economist have a semi-satirical post which asked, should Berkeley become a finishing school for the super rich of East Asia? It's kind of super, it's partly satirical because it's not fair to say Berkeley's a finishing school, but it is quite accurate to say that Berkeley, as well as many American institutions, from research ones to state schools to private colleges to community colleges, are looking eagerly at the rest of the world for students as we suffer demographic problems. So I fear that our class bias, it's not just prejudice, academia now reflects what has happened to class in the United States. And I, I see very, very few responses to this. I mean, I see, the, I see Bernie Sanders and I see Hillary Clinton urging uh, free tuition or tuition in different ways. President Obama suggested free community college tuition. I, I see little signs of those actually coming to pass. And there are zero signs of fixing this at the K-12 level. See, all of my happiness and optimism, Jerry, is just now gone. Now I'm at this very, very dark sun. But I do find one happy aspect. If I look at an 18-year-old today, I find it hard to imagine their lives. Imagine becoming an adult in the worst economy of a century. Imagine becoming an adult into the longest war of American history. You come into being an adult, the White House calls us the homeland generation because they don't remember the world before September 11. And meanwhile, we are slowly cooking the world and we're giving this to these 18-year-olds. And I think back to the baby boom generation and their, their insurgence against their elders. And these kids are very nice. And they do the work. And they create. And they're busy working away at the world. That keeps me going every day. I don't think the world deserves this generation. And I'm glad they're there.